So we're here at the Arm Tech Con 2010. Mm -hmm. And uh, so yesterday you had a really cool fireside chat uh, with uh, uh, the guy from Cadence. Mm -hmm. John Brueggemann. John right. Brueggemann. Yep. And uh, what did you talk there about there? Oh, uh, we talked about uh, a variety of topics. We talked about some of the constraints uh, governing the semiconductor industry as a whole. We talked about how uh, there's a kind of ever decreasing cost of semiconductors driven by an ever decreasing cost of uh, end equipment that consumers like to go and buy. Uh, we talked about the complexities of how you design a chip and how that's growing exponentially and just generally kind of how we manage all of that together and how we try and drive costs down through partnership um, because this technology conference is all about uh, partnership around uh, the ARM ecosystem. So we're talking about the business model around this uh Somehow you have to balance uh, collaboration with uh, the, the, what do you call it, uh, um, uh, when you uh, differentiate yourself, mm -hmm. right? So companies have to provide value, something new, mm -hmm. and at the same time they collaborate. So how does that work? Yeah, everyone is trying to provide value in the products that they ship to their customers. Um, but at the same time, everyone's under massive cost pressure. Uh, so companies really need to look at what it is about what they do that is differentiating compared to everybody else. And for the things that aren't differentiating, look to provide, uh, look to find an external provider that can do that for them. So they can then reduce their costs, spend their own efforts on the things that are truly differentiating. We talked a lot about that last night at the uh, Fireside Chat. And uh, something that Tudor Brown was talking about, that real value at ARM is, is that there's uh, uh, like it's an open kind of platform, right? I mean, there's mm -hmm. a, like it's the diversity, right? That's what he said. Yeah, so uh, we, we, we license our technology to lots and lots and lots of different companies and uh, the benefit of that is that you've got engineers in lots of our customers all designing around a common standard but innovating at the same time um, around that with you know, differentiating uh, ideas, differentiating technology. And we think that that provides um, a very uh, good solution to our customer's customer. Somebody who might want to build a handset or your video camera, for example. Um, all of that uh, uh, ingenuity is going around a common standard so people can keep their costs low and, and leverage the ecosystem we're building. Uh, whilst at the same time providing uh, very innovative products to their customers. So the business model is uh, is different from Intel, for example. This is like, uh, is it possible to say that this is, so you were there when it, when ARM was founded like a long time ago. Uh -huh. like, yeah, I, I joined the company a couple of months after it was founded and, and what was very um, uh, interesting and unusual about ARM was that uh, we were out to license our technology to people. If you look at Intel or, or many other companies, they are semiconductor companies and there's nothing wrong with being a semiconductor company. In fact, most of our customers are semiconductor companies, so uh, clearly we think that's a good thing. Um, but, but the real difference is that, uh, that Intel is developing all their own technology for their own use and they're not letting anybody else have access to that. That's fine for them, they clearly have a very profitable business as a result of it. What we're trying to do is uh, license technology to lots of people. That lowers structural cost in the industry, allows people to concentrate on things around uh, our technology uh, and create a greater breadth of products at the end of the day. So, um, did you... At some point, did, did the strategy at ARM, you had like a ch chairboard meeting or something, and did something shift at some point? Or was it like that since the beginning in 91, like 20 years ago nearly? Uh, yeah, the, the, the company was founded to, to uh, pursue a licensing model, um, to, to uh, get, design the technology and license it to people. Our, our founding CEO, uh, Sir Robin Saxby, said to us, you know, over his dead body, would we manufacture silicon? And he is still alive. Um, and uh, fairly sprightly, so uh, we, we are not manufacturing silicon, we're out licensing to our customers. Nice, and uh, so, so is it possible to say that you, the philosophy behind that is kind of like open source hardware to some point, open source, uh, versus like proprietary the whole way from, is there anything I can say it's, about that? It's not, it's not quite as, uh, it's not quite as um, extreme as open source because yeah. um, to, in, in order to provide a, a standard in, in the processor architecture itself, we do have to uh, control that ultimately. Now we do take a lot of input from our partners uh, to make sure we're driving in the right direction, but it's not quite open source where everyone can contribute to it. But what we do take is a very open approach to uh, enabling our technology out to the market. We drive standards such as AMBA, which is our on-ship bus interconnect standard. That we make the specification freely available to anyone and lots of people use it. Um, the, the processor architecture itself, very widely available. Uh, so, so we are open in that sense, but it's not quite open source. And uh, so it ranges from a whole bunch of products, it's in every smartphone, it's in every phone, it's everywhere, and is it going to 
reach a point when it's fast enough for desktops and laptops? So well, I get uh, continually blown away by the breadth of application that ARM technology gets used in. Um, I think we are today demonstrating multi-gigahertz implementations of our, of our processors, which is great for, for laptops. Uh, and of course, with the low power attributes that we have in all our technology, that's just fundamental in our DNA. Uh, that leads to a very interesting performance power trade-off that can yield some, some great looking products, I think, for handheld devices. So are you based here in the area, in Silicon Valley? I am, yes. I've been here for three years. As I said, I joined the company just a couple of months after it got formed, uh, but I spent the last three years uh, out here uh, managing our physical IP division. And that's uh, in San Jose, or it's not far from here? Yeah, not far from here. The office is uh, just a couple of miles down the road in, in San Jose. Yeah. And uh, that's mostly physical IP going on there? What's going on it's, there? It's mainly physical IP. Uh, there's about 250 people in our office here in San Jose. Uh, a lot of that is physical IP engineering, uh, but some of our graphics team is here, some of our software team is here, sales, marketing, support. Uh, you know, finance, HR, legal, that kind of thing. Uh, but the engineering uh, focus is mainly around physical IP. And c could you explain a little bit what goes on in a typical day? Is what do, how does ARM offices look like? Is it just like offices, or do you have like a whole bunch of laboratories and stuff? Uh, it depends which office you go, go yeah. see. Um, you know, if you walk into our office, there's, there's a lot of cubes with a lot of engineers doing a lot of hard work. Um, in our office here in San Jose, we do have a test lab, so we have um, silicon testers. Uh, we get uh, chips from our, uh, from our customers who are um, proving that uh, we, we're doing what, what we call silicon proof. So we're taking our technology, we are building it on chips, not for the purposes of selling the chip, but for the purpose of proving that it does work, that all the simulations match reality, and therefore is low risk for a customer to adopt that technology and use it in anger. So you, you collaborate with uh, all your customers somehow? Because they have the actual foundries and all that, and so yep. do you go like with the global foundries or some of these foundries? You go all the way and you, you try to make the next generation stuff, and you work with IBM and you work with uh, mm -hmm. lots of. Yeah, so 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 to, just picking up on the IBM example uh, here at the show uh, yesterday, Gary Patton gave a keynote in the morning talking about uh, the challenges of advanced process technology and the collaboration that we've done together. Over the last couple of years, we've worked very closely with IBM and Samsung and global foundries, uh, particularly, to develop 32 and 28 nanometer technology. Um, that's been vital because the complexities of that technology are, are huge. And what we've been trying to do is, is look at the process as it's being developed um, and look at uh, the performance of an ARM core that we're going to get using that technology and make sure that, uh, that we're optimizing as much as we can to make sure that the end result is as good as it can possibly be. So that's, that's a different form of collaboration that we've done previously, or, or is taking it to a greater extent. Um, but it's, ne it's necessary uh, because of the complexity of the technology and because of the performance levels and the power levels that people are trying to hit these days. So uh, is the ARM architecture uh, the best possible architecture there is? Well, I'm a little bit biased, so because <laughs> I would say that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> is it the best? I, it depends how you measure best. Clearly, <clears throat> it, it has... Uh, very good attributes uh, around, around fundamentally the simplicity. You know, we haven't bogged down the architecture with lots of features that are only used in one or two applications. Um, you know, we really, as we look at our markets, as we look at our customers, we try and synthesize that down to a common set of, of requirements um, and only increase features in our process or architecture that are really going to deliver true value across a range of applications. So the ARM architecture is, is lean, um, it's simple, uh, relatively simple. As a result, you can get very high performance, very low power implementations. And if you look at the breadth of application that we get designed into, you know, clearly there's a lot of people who think it's, it's very, very good for uh, the markets they're serving. And you're doing the same kind of uh, philosophy now with software with the Linaro somehow, like getting the basics done Mm -hmm. and then uh, providing it to everybody somehow so they can focus on differentiation somewhere else. Well, I think, I think we're that Lenaro re really uh, exemplifies um, this issue of collaboration and um, doing pe people not doing things which are differentiating. When we, uh, like last year, this time last year, as we were talking to our customers, we found lots of them were doing exactly the same work as, as everybody else. They were taking the Linux kernel, they're optimizing that for, for different ARM architectures, and then using that in their own product. So having seven or eight people do that is a complete waste of time. In putting Lenaro together, those companies have donated some of their engineering effort pulled their resources together so that there is one body now creating this optimized Linux kernel and Linux tools that can then be pushed out into the open source community 
into a full, uh, full blown distribution and then used for the benefit of the ARM uh, community in general. Nice. And then, the, so the ARM Cortex A9 is coming out, and the ARM uh, Cortex A15 uh, is coming later. Mm -hmm. And so you're making sure that that A15 is going to like it's going to be who, who designed that? Where was that designed? Uh, the A15 was designed uh, in a number of offices. A lot of the guys who are based in our um, Austin, Texas uh, facility worked on A15, but um, ARM's approach to projects in general is, is very uh, collaborative across the whole organization, so lots of people were involved in that, uh, but the center of that design was in Austin. Um, and A15, you know, we believe, takes uh, the performance of the ARM architecture to uh, another level, uh, multi-core, um, coherent clusters of cores, uh, uh, can be implemented into an SOC, so it's going to lead to some very interesting uh, applications, I think. Do you know if the naming A15 has anything to do with the A5, or why, is, why did they jump from A9 to A15? There was one, <laughs> one question in the blog. One question. Uh, that's a good one. I'm the wrong person to ask, actually. You okay. should ask the uh, product manager for, for the arm course. But, uh, right. yeah. Could you explain a little bit what you do here at the conference, like uh, other than the fireside chat? Do you go around and... Uh, the, the, so yesterday morning I was introducing the keynote speakers, I was here all day yesterday, um, just a useful opportunity to, to talk to our customers, talk to our partners, um, find out what's going on across the industry. You know, there are so many people here, um, it's almost like a, like a social function is part of it. Um, and just taking the opportunity to talk to our customers is, is hugely beneficial. Nice. And the next 10 years is going to be 100 billion ARM processors. If you say so. <laughs> That's what the, it was one of the keynotes. Oh, right. right. <laughs> um, well, let's hope so. I mean, it seems like uh, uh, people are always finding new uses of, of ARM technology. We certainly intend to continue driving our roadmap forwards, increasing the performance, lowering the power, increasing the efficiency, um, and allowing people to join this technology up in a, a risk, well, not risk-free, but in, in a low-risk uh, way so they can concentrate on the things that make their products really cool. So everybody can do what they're best at somehow. So everyone can do what they're best at, yeah. Right. Thanks a lot.